Hi there everyone, we're back at the Royal Society. I'm again here with Laura and we're going to be looking at some of the Royal Society expedition films and we've got a really exciting one today because we're talking about volcanoes. Yes. We're on a tiny little island in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. And this is Tristan da Cunha. Tristan da Cunha, yeah. The volcanic island of Tristan da Cunha, often called the loneliest island in the world, rises to a height of nearly 7,000 feet above sea level. It's situated on the southern portion of the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, together with four other volcanic islands. Ascension, St. Helena, Gough, and Bouvet. So one of the things we noticed straight away here, Laura, this is like being like edited and there's narration. This isn't yeah. just like raw footage. What's got, why is that? Uh, so this is one of the Royal Society's big flagship expeditions, really. Um, and because we had this film library at the Royal Society, these films would be made for kind of educational purposes, and this was prime for that. Previously thought to be extinct, Tristan re-erupted in October 1961 on the northwest corner of the island on a low strip of ground close to the village which housed the entire population. There's a couple of hundred people living there. It's a really small population. The British government stepped in, so they still had responsibility for the management of the island. The British Navy comes and sweeps everyone away. It takes them back to the UK. Now, before the scientists got there, we have these restricted messages. They're not that restricted. I think we're allowed to look at this now. <laughs> Basically, what's happening here is there's a Navy ship off the coast watching the volcano and reporting back what's mm. going on. So the original dome appears to have split open with new cone growing in the middle, emitting smoke continuously and flame and incandescent material. Here's a nice little point. They say cattle grazing peacefully at the western end of the yeah, settlement. It's not all bad. So, yeah. so, so the cows are like, oh, I'm yeah. gonna, <laughs> gotta eat the grass. Not my problem. All right, <laughs> there we go. After about a week, the volcano's vertical growth slowed up and it started expanding horizontally towards the canning factory on Big Beach. The fishing company decided to try to salvage as much equipment from the factory as possible. Boats were sent ashore to Big Beach just below the canning factory and working under the constant threat of rolling lava blocks from the volcano, a considerable amount of equipment was saved. Towards the end of October, the lava dome breached and a very viscous, blocky lava flow covered the factory and flowed into the sea. So now the scientists are like, enough's enough, yeah. we want some of this action, and the yes. Royal Society decides it's going to send people. So they send in a, two scientists first as a kind of a pilot mission. So they, with the help of the Navy, they get these two scientists over there just to have a, a little recce and see what the chances are for sending back a bigger expedition a little bit later on. The Royal Society Reconnaissance Party, consisting of two geologists, arrived on board HMS Jaguar. A careful watch was kept, but it was soon obvious that the volcanic activity was entirely confined to the settlement area. OK, so these two scientists that went first, they made some notes and some advice that could be given to the bigger party that mm -hmm. went back, and these make for quite fun mm -hmm. reading. This is his advice to the next round of scientists. Don't worry if this lava still feels hot. It may go on feeling warm for 10 years, and the stuff cools very, very slowly. It doesn't mean anything unless your shoes start smouldering just walk around the hottest spots. Good advice for anyone <laughs> in a volcano. If your shoes start smouldering, that does mean something. Time to worry. Yeah. Okay. Valuable information had been gathered by the reconnaissance party, which was of great help in the preparation of a 12-man expedition that the Royal Society was planning to land on the island at the end of January. Laura, when you first saw this footage after it had been sitting on the yeah. shelf for quite a while and you were sitting in a film room, like, what were you thinking when you were seeing this? Yeah, it's quite a thrill. I didn't actually appreciate just how professionally put together they were going to be. Almost as good as James editing on objectivity. <laughs> <laughs> no comment, she didn't agree with me. The Royal Society expedition to Tristan da Cunha arrived on the 27th of January aboard the South African frigate Transvaal. After two days delay due to bad weather conditions, boats were lowered and the expedition's equipment was ferried ashore and landed in the lee of the lava field just below the settlement. Base camp was set up in the administrator's house. And very soon, the scientific program, which included geological, botanical and zoological aspects, was being planned in detail. Of prime importance was the study of the new eruption. Viewed from the bottom of the cliffs behind the volcano, the details of the lava field and the volcanic cone soon became evident. The central and highest portion of the volcanic cone was almost entirely shrouded by sulfurous fumes, but at the back of the volcano, a small cinder cone or vent was seen. 
This cinder cone was the source of the explosive activity witnessed by the reconnaissance party. This seems like it was quite risky. Were they worried? Like, was it going to explode again? What were the concerns? Yeah. I mean, it was hugely risky. You don't really see that in the film because they're all very nonchalantly climbing all over the volcano, but it was very dangerous. So this is a document from just before they went over and we've yeah. got an interesting line here. What does this say? There is some small element of danger as the eruption may develop into a violently explosive phase. The risk, however, is a calculated one which any volcanologist would accept. They're hardcore, those volcanologists. Yeah. <laughs> all right. The summit was still very warm, the air temperature being of the order of 130 degrees Fahrenheit, and occasionally it was enveloped in choking sulfurous fumes. The red glow was observed in a long crack about one foot wide and eight feet deep, and although the material was extremely hot, it was solid and not liquid. The temperature of the material was measured with an optical pyrometer, and also with a thermocouple and potentiometer. The temperature was found to be 890 degrees centigrade. Of course, what was going on with the islanders is another interesting question. And there is a little bit of documentation about that, isn't there, yeah. Laurel? I guess because these people are quite isolated from society, there's yeah. a lot of interest in medical aspects of their life uh -huh. and, and things like that. The dentists seem to be very interested in, yeah. in what they were going on. There were lots of studies of these people's teeth. Obviously, they were looking into things like genetics as well. We see genetic yeah. studies. So it's probably no surprise that the islanders actually did quite want to go back at the end of it actually thank you very much a pilot party went over so about 12 islanders went over just to see like is it okay can we come back um, they decided it was safe to go back um, so they had a vote it went to a vote and the majority of the islanders were really keen to get back home there are so many interesting documents and reports about what was mm. going on i quite like this map here oh yeah there's the factory mm. that got swallowed up after periods of heavy rain, numerous temporary steam vents occurred all over the lava field. The cattle left on the island after the evacuation had fared well. Although the dogs had run wild and caused some damage, they were not yet hunting as a pack. The sheep had been almost annihilated by the dogs. Besides studying the domestic animals, the zoologist made collections of insects from the vicinity of the new volcano with a view to ascertaining the effect of the volcanic activity on the natural fauna of the island. The botanist dug soil profiles before setting up permanent quadrats in order to ascertain the redevelopment of the vegetation. Further away in the village, canna lilies were blooming normally in the gardens. Close to the volcano, the natural vegetation was badly affected by the poisonous volcanic fumes. There were specimens to be labelled and registered, and altogether nearly three quarters of a tonne of rock specimens were collected from 686 localities. One last picture as well, which I find quite interesting. This looks like it's a picture of a model. Yeah, so back in London, later that summer, on our summer soiree, the Royal Society put together a lovely little display about Tristan de Cunha, including this lovely model, which I'd quite like for the archive, wherever it is. Where is it? I don't know. We did wonder maybe they exploded it at the end as kind of a... No. <laughs> no. <laughs> if anyone in any archive anywhere in the UK has seen this, call Laura. She wants it. I want it. Exploded. <laughs> <laughs> the geological mapping of the island was completed a few days before HMS Protector arrived. And early on the morning of the 20th of March, 1962, her helicopter began ferrying the expedition's equipment, specimens and personnel from shore to ship. This task was completed in two hours. Only six months after the volcano first appeared, nearly all active growth had ceased and the eruption was virtually over. All that remained for the geologists was laboratory work. For biologists, however, the recovery of the damaged flora and colonization of the new lava will be a source of interest for many years. sunsets and glows that were being seen. Yeah. Twilight and afterglow effects at Chelsea, London, November 1883. So this is this is you know some time after the eruption now. That's right and and you know they're considered so beautiful that the paintings were exhibited at the Royal Society. This has got everything in it hasn't it? All the pictures and all the That's maps. That's right. And so it's the